Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at patterns and models with the tidyverse. Let's get started. So, patterns in our data uh, are going to provide clues about the relationship between our variables, okay? Now, if a systematic relationship exists between two variables, it will appear as a pattern in the data. Now, if you spot the pattern, you need to ask yourself a couple things, okay? Could this pattern be due to a coincidence, random chance? Uh, how can you describe the relationship uh, implied by the pattern? Is it positive, negative, linear, nonlinear? Um, how strong is the relationship implied? Again, is it kind of this like, if we're looking at a plot, is it this kind of agamorphous blob? Or does it look like a straight line? Okay, particularly when you're doing uh, scatter plots. What other variables may affect this relationship? So if you're looking at, for example, X and Y, is there some Z variable that influences one or either of the two variables or both of them simultaneously? Is there interaction between them? Uh, now, does the relationship change, okay? If you look at an individual or sub, uh, subgroup or subset of the data. So again, we can look at, we can use our old faithful data. So library, oops, library tidyverse. Uh, I'm gonna clear that out. And so we'll do ggplot here. We want our data to be faithful, and we are going to do geome uh, point, oh, point in here, um, and we want our aesthetics. X here is going to be eruptions. Uh, y is going to be waiting. And so we can definitely see here that there is a pattern, okay? There are two distinct groupings in here, but they are kind of a mismatch. Uh, okay, so they're not they're not like a tight group or anything like that, but they're very scattered out. They look almost like two little shotgun blasts. Um, now, it's very useful for us to actually see and kind of uh, reveal some type of uh, covariation. Again, so uh, eruptions as it goes up, again, it seems to be more people are waiting, okay? Um, and again, similarly for the smaller eruptions, okay, there is uh, a groups of people waiting as well. So... If you think about a variation as some sort of phenomenon that creates uncertainty, covariation is a phenomenon that reduces that uncertainty. So if two variables covary, okay, uh, then uh, you can use those var variables, uh, one variable to make a better prediction about the second variable. If the covariation is due to a causal relationship or a special case, okay, then you can use that uh, <clears throat> one variable to control the value of the second, okay? So for example, height and weight, those types of things are a function of one another. Uh, so models are gonna be uh, fantastic tools for us to use, okay? So let's actually go through and make sure that I have this in library and we'll do model R. Um, now this is a package that we use to do some uh, linear regression. Um, <clears throat> so let's go on and maybe talk about this. Now let's consider our data, uh, diamonds data. Okay, now it's hard to understand the relationship between cut and price because cut and carrot and carrot and price are, again, tightly related to one another as we've seen in our previous videos. Now, it is possible for us to use a model to remove that uh, very strong relationship between price and carrot, okay, and uh, get these little, uh, take that little subtlety out. Now, let's actually see what, uh, what we do with this. First off, let's actually create a model. And uh, I'm just going to call this... Uh, uh, mod for now and so we'll do a linear model which is an ordinary least squares regression and we'll we'll talk about um, regression analysis and all these other things later for now for now just uh, just uh, play along with me here a little bit and let me actually make this maybe just a little bit bigger so log price and we're going to see uh, for example the log of carrot uh, carrot here and our data is going to be uh, diamonds. All right, and then uh, we want to actually do, um, we're going to add in the residuals, okay? So residuals are kind of like, we can call them a little bit of the error uh, whenever we're doing some sort of prediction. So let's do uh, diamonds uh, two, and I'm actually going to overwrite this with our diamonds data. We're going to add uh, the residuals of, from our model and then we're going to mutate here, and we want our residuals. Uh, we'll call this a resid in here, and it's going to be uh, ex 
exp uh, an expression here, we want our residuals here. And I'll, and I'll talk about this here in just a second. So if I look at exp here, this is uh, for logarithms and exponents, okay? Because we actually ran and did the logarithm whenever we need to, um, uh, to fix that um, log, okay, we'll use the, exp uh, the exponential function in order to kind of uh, convert that back for us, okay? So they're in, uh, in the same um, units that we used before, okay? So that's to help offset this uh, log in here. So if we go on and we plot this out, we use our diamonds too, and we want to go on and add in here a geom point here, uh, and we want our mapping uh, to be aesthetic x is going to be caret, y here is going to be our residual. We plot this and. Oh, there it is. Okay, and we see that there is this uh, nice kind of little bit of a wave in there. Again, we may want to, uh, you know what, let me, let's switch this up a little bit and let's add in an alpha in here of 1 over 50. Let's see if that helps out. And again, this is just to, just to kind of make it look a little bit better. And again, here you can see that there's these kind of waves going on. Now, this is... Again, once you've removed uh, the strong relationship, okay, uh, between both carrot and price, again, we can see that uh, uh, <clears throat> that you expect that this relationship between the cut and the price. So relative to their size, better quality diamonds are more expensive. Okay, uh, so that's that's kind of that's kind of nice to see. So another thing that we can do uh, is actually take a look again at. Uh, Take a look at a box plot real quick. ggplot data here is going to be our diamonds too. And then we want to look at our box plot. Uh, box plot, and here we want our mapping. And this is just, just to kind of uh, reinforce what we've learned here. And you'll see that it should, it should take out all of that kind of variation that we had before. So before, remember, they were all, um, they kind of had this like upward trend. Okay, or downward turn, they had this, they had, you, you can see that they're mismatched a little bit. And you'll see here, once we map out the residuals in here, you can see that they're just about, they're just about even now, okay? Because, uh, again, um, because it's kind of took out all of that uh, interconnectivity relationship that they had before. So, We'll learn more about models later on in, in, in uh, probably even in a completely different series. We'll talk about linear regression models and machine learning with R later on. Um, but uh, again, use this kind of just to get, get a, a taste for what modeling is like. And again, here we're just looking at um, uh, simple relationships, uh, univariate relationships. And you can also do multivariate relationships with lots of different variables as well. Uh, but here we just looked at a very simple uh, plot, okay, of the residuals. So if you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.